regular meeting of the Littleton City Planning Commission on January 23rd, 2012. Uh, can we have a roll call, please? Commissioner Bagnell? Here. Commissioner Bockenstead? Here. Commissioner Coronado? Here. Commissioner Elrod? Commissioner Newfinke? Here. Commissioner Metcalf? Here. <laughs> Commissioner Ranville? Here. Commissioner Samuelson? Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. And any changes to the agenda? I'd like to uh, have us remove item number six, the public hearing for the Jiffy Loop. And the reason for that is the applicant has requested to withdraw their their proposal. So any everybody's. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Second. I didn't hear what Commissioner Samuelson said. I'd like to um, remove the item number six, the public hearing for the Jiffy Loop, because they've withdrawn their proposal. Do we need a formal vote on that? Um, sure. I think okay. it would probably be best. And it, maybe I can just give a little bit of background. As, as uh, we pointed out last time, um, Jiffy Lube was appealing the des, uh, Development Review Committee's decision on amending their site development plan. I think we pointed out to you they painted the building um, and really kind of uh, took it away from its originally uh, approved plan. We tried to work out some uh, ideas. We just couldn't get a response from them. But once we had a... Uh, it's scheduled on Planning Commission, then they were willing to look at alternatives. So we have an agreement with them that they will remove the bright pink from the building, bring it back to its original uh, brick facade in that area, tone down the white so it ties a little bit closer to the O'Reilly. So I think we're going to get a, uh, a more cohesive uh, streetscape. So the Development Review Committee did approve that, subject to it being accomplished, I think, in six months get uh, out of the cold weather where they can do that and um, so there's no need for the appeal on Planning Commission. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Dave seconds. Um, Matt, did you have something that you wanted to add to this? Oh, to yeah, do you want to come up here? Oh, well. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so we have a motion and a second. So all those in favor? And Matt, do you have a vote? <laughs> you vote, eh? So that is everybody in favor. And thank you very much. Um, any other changes to the agenda? I would like, and I, Glenn, I don't know if I can do this in reports, but to maybe discuss the agenda for the next meeting and also future agenda items. What do you guys think? Yeah, Every, anybody against Fine. adding into the report section? Glenn, does that work with you? Sure. Okay, so it's the agenda for the next meeting and future agenda items. Question regarding the chair. And just a reminder for uh, those that have their cell phone on um, to turn it off because of the audio system in this room. So our next item of business is approval of the minutes. So approval of the December 12, 2011 regular meeting minutes. Any changes? I move that we go ahead and approve the minutes as written. We have a second. second. Okay, Craig uh, motioned and Kurt seconded. All those in favor? That is unanimous. <clears throat> and moving right along, we have um, any s scheduled and unscheduled appearances and seeing no one, we can move forward to the next item of business, which is general business. And seeing no topics, 
Um, and we remove the public hearing from the agenda, we can go directly to reports. So we're moving along. Glenn. Um, Madam Chair and Commissioners, I put together a staff report um, to address, I think, the four items that I got from our last meeting that you wanted um, to discuss tonight. So. Let me just run through that a little bit, and we can talk a little bit at least, I, I hope, to talk about the role of staff and the role of commission as we kind of go forward into the brave new world um, that we're in here in 2012. Um, so what we uh, pointed out last time is kind of the direction that staff has in creating our work plan, which in a lot of ways is the planning commission's work plan, is that council will adopt those overarching goals and objectives um, for the community and as you know they've worked through this council university process I think it took about five nights and um, just last uh, Tuesday night they adopted those uh, goals and uh, objectives so from that um, staff takes our direction um, from council and that's because the council hires a city manager and the city manager hires directors like me so that's where I take my direction from um, so we are working together on a work plan to help bring forward some of those goals and meet some of those goals of the City Council. We're still working on that. I don't have a final uh, plan to, to give you tonight. Um, as I mentioned, February 10th is an extended work session with the City Council, and I can assure you there will be two major components of our work plan on that agenda and one will be um, process to adopt the uh, a new comp plan and also code amendments so um, what I did want to tell you is uh, that we see at least four major items on our work plan um, number one is code revisions some of the direction that we've gotten is um, we need to make some of these adjustments to the city code and in fact, um, tomorrow night, we're going to go in detail with the City Council on some amendments that have been going through the Historic Preservation Board. And that has to do with um, how certificates of appropriateness are approved, um, how we set a process to opt into the Main Street District. We really don't have a dictated process of how to do that, um, and a number of things. Um, for instance, we have a requirement that there's a list of merit, and these are um, potentially historic properties, but the research really hasn't been done to make the official designation. But our code says if any of those properties come into the building department, there's an automatic 30-day hold on them. And the idea is that during that 30 days, we kind of explain the importance of historic preservation to the applicant. Maybe they change their idea on what they do with the house and, and so on. But there's some legal issues with that in that um, we've designated these properties without any um, public process and um, there's a cost that comes with it. So there's a few of those things that, um, that we're gonna straighten out. But as I've gone through the code and come across various issues, there's other um, um, issues with the powers and duties of uh, many of the, uh, the boards and commissions that that we're responsible for in community development. For instance, recently, Board of Adjustment, they had a case where um, it's somewhere in our code, it says, if you have an issue with your storm sewer fees, you appeal it to the Board of Adjustment. It's adjustment, right? I always get appeals and adjustment mixed up. In fact, I got it wrong in your staff report, I'm sorry about that. So the Board of Adjustment typically looks at, um, and Commissioner Metcalf's been on that board, he really knows the physical requirements of what you're supposed to be doing on the Board of Adjustment. Hearing appeals of a stormwater sewer fee probably isn't one of them. That shouldn't fall into the purview of um, the uh, Board of Adjustment. Another one that I've heard a lot about is a Development Review Committee. Development Review Committee is a staff committee that approve site development plans. Um, we talked about that a little bit tonight. Um, but there's all kinds of things that that uh, group approves from commercial fencing um, to temporary uses, temporary structures, 
a whole gamut of things that kind of mucks up our system a little bit. So um, we're rethinking the Development Review Committee. And quite frankly, Planning and Zoning Commission, or the Planning Commission has come up too. And we've seen kind of the issues, and, and one of the things that's kind of struck me is we have such an active Planning Commission that they want to do my job, which is <laughs> nice in some ways, but it's, it kind of creates a, uh, an issue with um, of who, who is unbiased in, in the process. Um, one of the biggest concerns, I think, when I read the powers and duties of the Planning Commission is make and approve comprehensive plans. And I guess the first thing I think of is if you're writing a plan and making a plan, should you be the ones approving it? And typically an advisory commission staff would make a plan. You would review it from a different unbiased perspective and we would both make recommendations to the city council. But um, our rules aren't set up that way. It, it does have the planning commission as a much more active role than advisory commission. Um, and I think it would be my recommendation, it will be my recommendation to city council, that we temper that to make the planning commission more of an advisory commission. So that's kind of why we, as we get into and we start talking about long range plans, um, I think that's going to be job one, is really set the roles of various boards and commissions and staff and the council. So um, tomorrow night, really 90% of the discussion is going to be historic preservation because um, Kirsten has put in a lot of work on that and uh, we've been to the board several times. Um, but we're going to talk about other amendments and I'm going to talk about some of the issues I see with the other boards and commissions and the roles and duties and some of the uh, proposals that we're going to bring forward. And then there's a whole gamut of, um, and we've identified a number of the issues that are just code issues that have to do with processes and the confusion that it costs primarily in the downtown area where we have a historic um, preservation board making recommendation and a planning commission re making recommendation and a development review committee making recommendations and we're going to try and untangle that process as well. So um, then uh, let's see, we talk about a, a downtown parking inventory and demand model. Um, that's something I brought up uh, in the past. I've looked at all the, and we hear it every time we talk about the downtown is, is the parking issue. Um, I've read the studies, we've done about three of them in the city of Littleton. The one thing that I see kind of missing is a tie to the actual parking that's out there on the, in the, um, at the various hours, the actual demand for parking versus land uses. So there's kind of a, a disconnect with how many, uh, is it tied to the number of restaurants we approve? Is it, is it the amount of office? What's really generating the parking demand? So I think primarily staff can um, uh, do that and actually create a simple model so that as projects come forward to you and you have to kind of analyze whether a parking waiver is needed, you've got a little bit more information. And that'll really be the first step in deciding, okay, what's the next step in a parking management plan? Do, do we need to build additional parking and so on? So it's kind of a first step towards solving the big parking problem, but I, I think it's an absolute requirement. And then the 1981 comp plan. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a long time. Um, and I know that the Planning Commission, believe me, I hear it loud and clear, as you did your priorities, you said Santa Fe Corridor ought to be your next priority. And I hear you, and I understand, but I think it really would be a mistake to go down into the detail of another neighborhood or a corridor plan without updating those citywide goals and objectives that are in the, in the plan. So what we're going, uh, in fact, we're kind of working on it now, what would be a good public process to make sure we're on the right track with the overall citywide goals and objectives? Um, we're going to present that to council and it'll be just the, the, the bones of the, of the process, believe me. Um, and there will still be a lot of input that the Planning Commission will, will uh, have to that. But we want to get a good direction from city council that, yes, we hear you, we think the citywide um, uh, goals and objectives ought to be number one and you've got a pretty good process 
go forward and then we'll come back to you with it and fill in those holes that we think needs to fill in. One of the things we've talked about, we've had this disconnect in the downtown plan between the Planning Commission and Council. And there's a lot of reasons why that happens. Uh, part of it is when you go four years, councils change, planning commissions change, and you kind of you, you move away from each other <laughs> a little bit. So I think what's really going to be vital for the comp plan is that we have a technical committee and that's staff because we're going to kind of feed you the numbers and, and um, feed you what we think are going to be the major issues. Um, but then we're going to need a steering committee that's going to, I think, going to require at least three planning commissioners, hopefully match it with city council um, and some major stakeholders. So a committee of nine would be ideal, I think. Um, that would help steer the process through. I've already heard from a couple of council members, six months. That's, that's been the number thrown out. So that's kind of our goal is stay within that period. So I guess going forward, I know we uh, are, the next item is the Santa Fe corridor, and we'd love to get your input, but <clears throat> from staff standpoint, I think uh, really your next um, issues are going to be, we're going to bring forward some code amendments, and then I think um, in the beginning, you know, I, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but April, May, kicking off the overall amendment to the comp plan citywide goals and objectives. Um, again, council might say, nope, go do Santa Fe corridor, in which case we will. But at this point, we think we really need to set the overall umbrella goals before we get into the details. Um, so that is our work plan, the Santa Fe corridor. Um, we did get you an adoption of the, plat, uh, uh, the plan. Um, I think it would probably be a worthwhile uh, objective right now if, if you have issues and you see what those issues are in the Santa Fe plan, we'll record them right now and, um, and keep them when we get to that point. Um, and then also uh, Matt has put a lot of effort in and uh, Linda as well on the project plan. And I think uh, there are some good ideas as far as setting a template. I really believe in setting a template when we get into the downtown plans. And I probably disagree with um, Commissioner Metcalf. I don't think it has to be rocket science. I think um, what you lose when it becomes too amorphic of a process is you lose a lot of your public input. So um, I think we can do a good job and we can kind of fit to a certain detail. In fact, um, I think we have the citywide goals. I think we do have a pretty good plan as far as the downtown plan of when we get into detailed plans where you have a lot of different issues. Perhaps it follows more of a, uh, a, a standard that we set aside with the downtown neighborhood plan. And maybe if we do neighborhood plans, maybe they would have a different form. Um, I've read through the plan. I think a lot of the neighborhood plans are very similar. So I don't know. I, I would tend to say we could perhaps collapse a lot of those neighborhood plans and not necessarily think of a couple of different blocks differently than the adjacent couple of blocks. Um, but I don't know yet. And then, um, so we do have Matt's uh, project plan. Um, I think I'd love to hear your input on that. But again, I think staff is going to bring to you what we think would be the process that will reach the most people in the shortest period of time for those overarching citywide goals. And then maybe that would be a better, after we uh, present that to you, perhaps that would be a better discussion to get into the details. And I really think, to really help, I think, the process, I think the Planning Commission's got to stay up at that 10,000, 30,000 foot level. When you're down in the details, uh, designing a process, you're not doing that. And that's kind of our job. We're kind of the weed whackers. We're down there trying to provide the information so that you can make the, the best decision and best recommendation to the city council. So that's kind of my speech on that. Um, and then we have the parking lot. And that was a concept that uh, uh, was developed, I think, as a part of the revisions of the downtown neighborhood plan. Um, when council gave us the 29 uh, tenants of amendment that they nailed to the, to the church wall and uh, planning commission sat down and went through it, 
and the parking lot I think is a great concept. We can't solve the world's problems now, but good ideas come up through these discussions and we don't want to lose them so they get parked for the time being. So right now I have just two issues there. Um, building height in the downtown. Uh, we did kind of change the height map, but I think perhaps there was concern that maybe as we get into code amendments, maybe there's, or, or design guidelines, perhaps there's a little bit more meat we can put on that bone. Um, and then the sustainability goals and policies, um, which uh, we did get some of them that relate to the downtown in the downtown plan. But here again is a good time to address them in the citywide overarching goals and objectives um, that I think we need to, to do next. So with that, um, Chair Newfinke, I'd be happy to answer any questions or if you want to go into the South Santa Fe corridor or can I answer any questions for you? Why don't we go for some questions, Craig? Um, just going back to um, Glenn, your discussion of the uh, comp plan update, uh, you mentioned six months is the goal right now. Would that be to do an update of the comp plan? Is that? Well, as I was sitting here, I guess, uh, trying to get the downtown plan, I, it was one or two council members said, I think we ought to amend the comp plan in six months. That's Councilperson Beckman. We all need goals, and that's, <laughs> okay. that's good. But. Well, and I personally think it's doable if we have worked out what the template's going to be and what our public process, if we discuss all those issues and have a template or have a means of moving forward, I think that's definitely doable. But we've got to work out all the issues up front, so sorry. I, I would only question it in terms of uh, full public engagement that, um, in my experience, it would be very difficult to get meaningful discussion with the community within that time frame. Um, but certainly it's an aggressive goal, and I think we would need an aggressive goal, and, um, uh, uh, and sort of setting the tone by staff, as you suggested. It would be a different process where staff is, is really doing a lot of the groundwork and we're operating at that higher level. I think that's a good input. Well, and I would tend to agree. I think uh, we were thinking 12 months. Um, so uh, part of that was, again, if we, if we stick to those large citywide goals, perhaps it, that could be accomplished in a six-month period. Um, but we haven't sketched out all the details. Um, a couple of you were able to attend the um, Mind Mixer uh, social media uh, program, and um, our uh, public information officer also had a demonstration, and I think uh, we think that will be a really good tool to help us kind of reach out to the community as well. So I think you'll see something that covers almost every base. Matt? Well, I don't have any questions. Steve? Uh, so these four bullet points, is, there, is that your, the department work plan for the next two years? Not necessarily. Um, what I know is these are the main topics um, for at least the next year. But, um, you know, life changes and other issues may come up. Um, but uh, one of the things also that I did not put on here, but I know was a goal out of the downtown plan was uh, the urban center designation. And um, we're rapidly getting into the Dr. Cog time frame for that. So that's something I, I did not put on here. But um, these are the main headings, as I mentioned in the report. Yeah. What would you estimate would be the earliest that we could, that we would, uh, as far as the, your department work plan, that we would ever get back to the Santa Fe plan? Is that years down the road? It's, it's very hard to say. I would not say years. No. I, I'm kind of thinking at one step at a time. And again, the citywide goals, because once you get into the detail of the Santa Fe corridor, if, if you don't have the overarching issues of the community, it could really change the flavor of what comes out of there. Um, for instance, Littleton's generally thought of as a built-out community. We have a lot of neighborhoods that are aging every day. Um, and there's going to be increased demand for services. So 
Would that mean that the city needs to look for additional um, uh, revenue sources? Does that mean that we need additional retail out of Santa Fe corridor or, or not? The, those are kind of the things I think we would really need that direction over the citywide goals before we get into it. So um, I would tell you, I think when I look at it, there are three, what I think are three specific area plans that normally what I think is when you kind of delve into more detail. Um, one would be the downtown because that's a unique place. Broadway uh, would be another one, Broadway Avenue, and Santa Fe would be number three. Um, that's just kind of my off the cuff idea. But whether it be two years, three years, one year, six months, I couldn't tell you. Um, if, the, if the community says Santa Fe, there's some, a lot of land use conflicts there, we need to get into that right away, I, I can guarantee you it, probably, it would probably become number one. Steve, did you want to say anything else? Well, I got lots of things I want to say, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, I mean, I'm, it's, I'm actually pretty worked up over this. Um, whose, whose decision was it to throw the Santa Fe corridor plan on the back burner, even though we all, as a group, was saying that we, we, we felt pretty, that it was pretty important? Nobody's throwing it on the back burner. I, I'm just telling you that council wants the 1981 comp plan adopted. Um, I don't think going off on the Santa Fe corridor is the way to accomplish their goal. Now, if they say, you're wrong, staff, um, we need to do a Santa Fe corridor, believe me, that's where we take direction. So um, that's all I can tell you. Right now, my professional recommendation would be is that we do the citywide goals and then we move into the details of the plan. And I personally think that you can accomplish both in parallel because there's a lot to be done with the Santa Fe corridor that really is unique to that corridor and very different from the overall comp plan. So, but that's just my opinion. Anybody, any other comments? Dave? I think I'm, I'm going through the same struggle Steve is. Um, I think some of us expected with the change, not just in council, because we only have two new members on council, but with a new community development director, a new city manager working with the slightly modified city council. And given some of the issues we've raised in the last four years about conflicts and the roles of, of zoning versus comp plan versus DRC and, and downtown design guidelines. I, there was a, a, a feeling of change in the air. And there's nothing wrong with that. And if city council wants to revise the, uh, the uh, within the guidelines of, of state regulation and, set, and the city charter, uh, just what the roles of the boards and commissions are and how staff, council, and those boards and commissions, including the planning commission, work things out. That's just changing the rules of the game. It's out of our hands. We have to adapt. I'm a little concerned about a couple of things. In 35 years planning and executing construction, designing construction projects, I've never heard, heard anybody say, here's how long we're going to have to do this. Now we'll decide what we're going to do. Never. You don't sit there and say it's going to take six months or 12 months until you decide what it is you're going to try and accomplish, how you're going to go about it, what your tools and resources are going to be. I just, I, and six months is absurd. I don't know who came up with the idea, but to think that you can get, get staff, city council, and planning commission on the same page, which we've all agreed has to happen, especially with new rules, figure out how to do a public outreach to an entire community, which is not a homogenous body. If we approach it as a shotgun approach, we're going to bring everybody in. We're going to get nothing of substance back. It, it just, not in six months, certainly. So I, I worry a lot about that. I, I have listened to, to uh, people tell me in the past, as a program manager, 
you have to you have to manage the forest you can't look at the trees if you don't understand how the trees work you can't manage the forest so I, I know that one of the reasons we took so long in coming up with a downtown plan was we spent the first two years just trying to get our feet under us and that wasn't staff's problem they were shorthanded and we were we were trying to get everybody on the same page coming from different backgrounds on the other hand the fact that we were coming from different backgrounds and brought different perspectives and different skills different knowledge bases into this discussion made for a better overall foundation of information that could could have made a better plan rather than just depending on staff so I'm, I'm a little dismayed at the direction that's taking uh, as far as the detailed areas I understand how looking back on it Glenn you might see that well things changed between four years ago when City Council laid out our guidelines what they asked us to do and that's what may have you may see think that that's what led to the conflict essentially the people who were on City Council when they laid out our charge and what they asked us to look at and what we ended up looking at were still the people who rejected this in November there was no change it may have been a change it may have been the fact that a reflection of the fact that City Council didn't communicate with us during that four years anybody want to disagree with me on that certainly not effectively but personnel change that wasn't it not by a long shot um, as far as um, as as far as South Santa Fe quarter versus the rest of it I still think we all once we get past the discussion with City Council on what they expect from everybody from staff from themselves from us we need to talk about how we're going to approach the city comprehensive plan is it by neighborhoods regardless of whether you know they're as huge as the south neighborhood right now uh, are we going to get down into something as small as even something smaller even than downtown area we need to define what it is we're trying to do before we start chopping it up into pieces right now I have to tell you if we were going to approach this plan or the, the comp plan update six months 12 months or longer and follow the same neighborhood outline we had here I challenge somebody to defend the idea that somebody who lives right behind a shopping center along Broadway in the south area has the same interests the same fears and needs the same reassurances or protections as somebody who lives over near Santa Fe in a purely residential setting we've got if we're going to talk about neighborhoods or small areas we've got to define up front what constitutes a common interest a common cause to constitute a neighborhood if we're going to talk about corridors and strips and we've done that then we can talk about that and then figure out how the largely common interests of residential neighborhoods can be coalesced into a single plan a single set of protections the idea of the comp plan is to both protect and and uh, promote the healthy development of neighborhoods be they residential commercial or mixed that's what this ought to be doing to, to define to decide up front we're going to do it in six months to decide up front we're going to do it in a an administratively drawn set of six or ten neighborhoods without looking to to figure out to decide what constitutes a neighborhood or a small area that that has that, that coalesces around some purpose is silly in my opinion did I miss anything Steve uh, we've missed a lot oh okay we've missed a lot I think you know uh, let me let me just clarify the six months uh, I'm not saying that's what it's going to be um, but again you, you mentioned that um, you, you've worked a lot on architectural projects you always have a budget and you always have a time frame I don't know how this is that much different if you're drawing a parallel there right? after you define the program we haven't defined the program it, it's like saying and I've done this it's like saying we're going to de de uh, design a, um, a k-8 slash high school slash um, sports stadium campus okay we're going to take 12 months to do it you haven't told me how many square feet you haven't told me what special purposes you haven't told me where it is until you've defined the primary elements and the program you can't talk budget or time frame and we haven't we need to have that discussion Steve 
you know, I do, I do realize that we're going to be moving forward onto, you know, onto the, the plan, the four things there. But uh, however, I want to uh, say, you know, I don't know who all, you know, who all was very familiar with the uh, history through the Walmart hearings, um, where they set a precedence on the. The, the Planning Commission and the Council letting, uh, they, they stressed the uh, changing conditions of Santa Fe. The, uh, the, the plan was adopted in, what, 2000? The Santa Fe Corridor. Mm -hmm. And uh, 2001, Aspen Grove came in. Since then, the Denver Seminary had came in. The widening of Santa Fe had happened. Uh, the traffic on Santa Fe had increased. The RTD uh, down lot down there with the light rail has came in. Those were all those were all changing conditions that uh, the city used at that time to justify the Walmart at that time, and basically telling everybody that we've got changing conditions in this area. The current corridor plan in this area is not a, is not effective right now because the city has come out and t and t told everybody that they have changing conditions. Okay. And what I'm worried about is now we have an area of town that basically has no comp plan in it right now because the city has come out and said that it's ineffective. And that's why I feel that we need to have the Santa Fe plan up front. And it is not like any of the other neighborhoods. You know, I, I live in there. My, my neighborhood is nothing like anybody else's here except for Linda's because she's in my neighborhood. I mean, it's a... It's a very commercial area. It's not, you know, we, we work up a citywide plan in trying to get all the neighborhoods all, you know, in the uh, Goddard area or, you know, the northeast area. And that's, that's not going to do anything for the Santa Fe plan. I, I've got no problem. I really haven't heard any of these, any of the issues. I just heard modify the Santa Fe corridor. And I can tell you I will pass on to the council the Planning Commission's concerns, as well as all of you can as well. Yeah, just to, to follow up on something Steve said, one of the reasons that council, uh, council directed us and we agreed wholeheartedly that downtown needed to be addressed first is because, not just because there were, it was subject to change and evolution, but because it had already been subject to change and evolution and the rules that we had in place had not only not been terribly effective, they'd been ignored right and left. Okay, council and the planning commission and the community said, we've got to do something about this. We can't keep reacting. We've got to take control of what we want to see. Well, guess what? Steve's right. The same thing's happening in the South Santa Fe Corridor. And we can, we can put it off and put it off until events control what's going to happen down there. Or we can try and set up the, the priorities and the new rules for how, thing, how the planning is going to be done and then turn to that. But... At this point, South Santa Fe Corridor, assuming you really don't slip back into a major recession, is just as urgent now as downtown was four years ago. Karina? Thanks, Linda. Um, I actually uh, agree with you, Linda, that I think that this is something that we can do in parallel. When, and, and I do appreciate the comment of getting um, feedback from a community-wide basis to understand where, you know, what has changed. Maybe nothing changes in the, in the process of going through this, but that does, that is intended to represent the community overall, not individual neighborhoods. I think that's important in helping to set the vision. Now, the reason I, I feel we can do this in conjunction, some of the things or the efforts that we're going through for the achieving, uh, getting the, the, the goals and objectives for the community wide uh, can be the s similar steps for getting uh, input into the Santa Fe corridor specifically. So if we're going out for public out outreach for community-wide, we can also carve out an area that's specific to Santa Fe so we can work in parallel. I think the most important part of that really comes to um, what Matt has shared with us, which is we have to have a very disciplined project plan. Otherwise, what you know should take six months, will take one year, will take three years, and to the point of the planning commission here is we can't wait another year. We can't wait another three years to address Santa Fe if it's in this state of flux because then everything that comes to that quarter becomes 
a debate without enough guidance around it. So I think that's that's what we're trying to stress from an urgency perspective. We can't just let it happen on its own. We need to give guidance there. So I, I'm with you, Linda. I think we can do this in parallel. We just have to be very disciplined. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to make a comment that I don't know anybody who has to drive through a shopping mall to get to their houses. So we have to do that in our neighborhood. <laughs> but um, I, uh, based on Steve's point, I just wanted to read the um, public policy for rezoning section 12-1 to just reiterate why this comprehensive plan is really important um, because it says that the city council may not approve a rezoning unless it's consistent with the goals and policies of the comprehensive plan comma and promotes the general welfare of the community if a proposed amendment to the official zoning map is not consistent with the comprehensive plan, the re then the request may only be approved if the applicant demonstrates that the requested rezone is justified because of change or changing conditions in that particular area or the city in general, or the rezone is necessary to correct a manifest error, error in the existing zone classification. So I, I know that, I mean, that basically throws the Santa Fe corridor out the door uh, totally unless we redo this plan. Well, that's a question okay. of precedent. Because there were changing conditions five years ago, does that mean there's changing conditions today? And do, because there was that precedent set by statement that there were changing conditions, does it necessarily override what's written in the comp plan? I guess those are my questions. Because I read through the Santa, the Santa Fe Carter um, goals and objectives and policies here and there's not a heck of a lot that I couldn't agree with. It seems like a, a fairly solid plan even though it was written about 10, 15 years ago. Unfortunately, the last six years have shown that the language that Linda just read can be used to justify or at least rationalize okay. anything you want. Right. Anything. Anywhere. At any time. And quite frankly, you're never going to tighten, if you tighten up the rules so much that that can't happen, you also tighten up the rules so much that you discourage any kind of, maybe not any, any development at all, but certainly any kind of creative, innovative development, which was one of the things we've, we've been trying to do as far back as, as the, uh, the PDO uh, portion of, of city ordinance. So I'd, I'd hate to see us go that far. But somehow or other, what we tried to do with the down plant, town plan was identify certain principles that should not be transgressed just because of change. We tried to tie a specific kind of change and how that affected or how that was affected by or, or constrained by the principles. I think we failed in that for, for, in a lot of ways. I'd like to think that a new process, a new approach, could help us do better as we go into the South Santa Fe corridor or over, over re-examine Broadway or some of the other areas like along Littleton Boulevard where, where other uses than residential are encroaching on residential areas. Uh, I'm hopeful that a change in approach, a change in priorities, a new definition will help us do that. Um, but I, I, I have to say at the moment it, it sounds worrisome to me because it's, it's rather vague. Steve? No. One, Glenn, from what I heard, one of my concerns is that based on what you said, the February 10th meeting, uh, the city council retreat workshop, whatever it's called, is that the city council will be dictating to the planning commission what the process will be to adopt a new comprehensive plan. And it's always been my impression that we would collaborate in recreating that process and setting the communication standards with the city council as to what we would do. And well, it's certainly within city council's purview to change the rules any way they want. Uh, I, you know, you can't fight that. That's, that's just the way the city charter is set up. I'd like to think they'd at least, I'd like to think there's more opportunity for dialogue. If they're going to raise questions about, well, we think we need to change this in order to accomplish something else or to expedite things or to produce a better, a better end result, I'd like to at least think there would be a chance to, for us to give them our perspective on how, how we've tried to do that in the past, what obstacles we've run into, how we think we could work together and go back and forth to work that out. I'd hate to think it's just going to happen on the spot, get handed to us, 
I mean, we can live with that. We have no choice. But I'd like to think there's, as you said, Linda, some kind of collaborative effort there. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important because we've got, I mean, if you're going to change the role of the Planning Commission, we, I would think we would like to have a little bit of input into how you change that role so that we can adopt and be prepared to um, set forward their direction. And Craig? Well, perhaps there's a, a best practices that could be shared with you know, the templates that other planning commissions use and, and how they interact um, on in comp planning processes. Um, you know, I think my experience here in three years or so on planning commission is that we do get down into the weeds a little bit more than other planning commissions I've seen, and perhaps because we've been in a recession, the workload from regular uh, uh, zoning type of hearings hasn't been there. We've had the opportunity to do that. It's been great fun, but um, you know, I think that there is a different, there are different ways to do it, and I think we should talk about that and understand what they are. Let, let, let's keep something in mind. Our, our normal unarguable role as a planning commission is to review applications and, and uh, non-conforming uses, that sort of thing. Um, in the process of doing that, we don't rely just on staff reports. We do tend to go out and do our own research and look at the situation, look at comparable situations, try and understand what's going on so it's not just, forgive me, because Dennis, I, I, I don't mean any disrespect whatsoever based on the last four years, like to depend on more than just staff recommendation. We like to understand what we're doing and make sure that what we're doing is consistent or at least of a type, you know, fits the fabric of other decisions we've made. Comp plan's no different. I think that's, if anything, even more important. As Craig suggested, it, it sets a precedent, not a binding precedent necessarily, but I, I feel rather silly going one direction for one ish, one case and then changing direction on a similar case later without any thought to the fact that I had a totally different attitude on the first one. There has to be some reasonable consistency. It needs to be directed toward a reasonable goal. Um, so I'd like to think that doesn't get lost no matter how the process is, is changed. Uh, I assume that the, the uh, February 10th meeting is not going to be a uh, definitive uh, 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 crisis point. They're not going to make a decision right then and there, put it into effect, and then we're stuck with it. There will be time for some feedback. They could. Uh, yes, and, and that's absolutely right. And, okay. and please reserve judgment. Um, I wish I could show you exactly what we're going to present at this point, but I really intend for it to be the bones, as I mentioned earlier, of what I think the process would be. And then it's absolutely going to come back to you. In fact, if you want to talk about February 20th and that becomes our discuss discussion on February 20th, I think it would be a much more fruitful discussion. I, I think we learned a lot from our public outreach process. Mainly we learned what didn't work well. Um, and there were a few things, especially as we got further into it, that, that did work well. I'd like to think we could apply those lessons to the community-wide uh, section of the uh, comp plan update as well as to individual small area plans. I'm, I'm just nervous about the idea of, of how effectively we can do that in a, in a really constrained time frame of 6 to 12 months. Even with the, the technology that we saw last week is available to us, it's hard to just throw things out for public input without giving people background so they have at least a general understanding of what is possible. Uh, so that we, people don't come in here and say, well, isn't the city going to plan exactly how many businesses go in where and what the revenues are going to be and what the, no, we're not going to do that. that. That's not planning. Um, but we need to get that understanding out there so people come in and they have, we're um, shaping. No, that's not the right word. Um, we're, we're giving them some idea of the kinds of issues that they need to think about before they come in the kinds of um, interactions that they need to be aware of before they come in and start offering solutions to a problem that had, they haven't had identified for them yet. That's what happened with the last comp plan. That's what we try to do with the downtown plan. Um, I think we need to, to shape that discussion for them so they have a framework to, uh, to provide input to us on. 
And to me, it's all about when we come to the Planning Commission, I kind of want to know what we're going to talk about so that I would be prepared. I think to me that's really important that we have that set plan that we can move forward and that we can see that we're making progress at every meeting. I think that is uh, very, very important to get that put together because it's just... Absolutely agree. Mm -hmm. Absolutely agree. I'm, I'm going to make one last little quibble. C can we find another term besides parking lot? Every time I see it, I think we're talking parking downtown. No. Uh, uh, now, what we used before, Dennis, we bucket list or something. Can we find something besides parking lot? It's just very confusing. I understand where it, where it comes from, and I, I understand that it's it's appropriate. It's just very confusing, and if it's confusing for us, it's going to be confusing for other people. Maybe maybe it I'm keeps in our the forefront of our mind that we that have to address parking has to be dealt with. <laughs> Hard to argue that. I, just just a request. You know, somebody can put their their thinking cap on. Usually I use the term issue list, those things. Um, bucket list, yeah. Um, parking lot I thought was unique because you, you just kind of park issues there, but you can drive them away. Or It depends which lot in downtown Middleton that you park. Like nice picture. <laughs> I, I appreciate the metaphor, but I just think it's a bit confusing. Can we all decide on what a better metaphor would be? I'll second Have issues use list. It. Issues list? Pending issues, I don't, you know, whatever. Pending issues or issues list? I, I don't care. I don't care. As long as we all know what issues it is, list. I don't care. Issues yeah, list. Okay. Okay. Issues list, everyone sort of agree? Right. Yeah. List. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and in that sense, I'd like to add, too, that we have said over the last 12 to 18 months that we would pick up again, and we, we still need to. One is the question of the sign code or questions about sign code. And I'm not going to go into details at this point, but we had several issues. The, la the last time this came up, we identified a couple of things that weren't quite working according to code that we thought we needed to talk about. And quite frankly, more recently, we had the same problem with sidewalk widths and alignment along Broadway. In both cases, it, and to a certain extent, it, it evol involves the written code saying one thing, standard practice or habit going in a different direction. And I think we all agreed in both those issues we need to resolve the conflict, so let's not forget about it. Anything else? Anybody remember from any previous applications or anything? The sign code was the really bad one. Right. Mm -hmm. That was how we measure area. Is that, yes, is that how we how, measure uh, it. What, air, what the uh, air uh, isn't part of the sign, so you can have a big yellow M that went like that, and the air in between it didn't count. So the sign could be, you know, a gargantuan sign. M, for instance. Yeah. For well, instance. yeah. M is a separate letter versus M on a on a. Rec a square or rectangle with a background. You know, there were some discrepancies between what the code appeared to say and how we, as a community, have gotten to have come to interpret it and apply it. Recently, we also talked about sidewalks. So the code says one thing, um, but we have made many exceptions to it. So right. that was another one that I at least right. recall on the. And that's why I brought those two up, just because of those two recent issues. Yeah. I think the other problem with signage was um, the question of whether it's just facing on one street or on another street. So there were some issues about that as well, uh, where we, in the past, decisions have made mm, with a flexible interpretation of the rules. And I, I think it, it goes back to our desire that we try and get predictability into the into the code and its application. Okay, Steve. And then. Uh, We've got, uh, going back further, we have uh, um, the, uh, the parking requirements downtown um, where some hearings we've had uh, people that we've made them go off and rent spaces to, uh, to uh, fulfill their need for their, uh, for their addition. And then other people, we've just waived everything altogether. And we've actually even voted on eliminating the HPV's 50% um, reduction at yeah. some point. Yeah, we did. 
So presumably that'll come up as we resolve the address the parking issue. It's more than just do we have enough spaces? Are they the right place? Do we have? Are they? Do they allow enough time? Do we okay. need a public-private parking lot or a parking garage? Any other issues on the parking lot? Pardon? Issue list. Oh, I'm sorry. Any more issues? On the issue Unless she's being literal. On the issues parking. list. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I uh, just get a little bit more detail on the. Um, what you were mentioning, Steve, as far as parking implementation has been uneven? Yes. The, uh, in, uh, is that through various actions of different boards and commissions or have different rules? Well, through, no, through the Planning Commission. Um, we've had different uh, uh, results from our hearings, uh, like, you know, get into more particular uh, Ruth Graham and uh, Ancient Arts. Uh, she has to rent uh, six spaces a month and or six spaces and prove to the city that she has these spaces available uh, to her so that uh, she can fulfill the need that she needed to when she did the uh, addition of the second floor. Okay. And that was a planning commission action then yes. that required that? Yes. And then uh, we've had other ones, you know, what Merle's that uh, was able to uh, forgive Wait, 90, 80 some spaces. Yeah. And that again was a planning commission action? That was a planning yes. commission action. Actually, you could How probably throw the that? Sternberg building parking situation into that too. Yeah. Rules that would have applied to a private owner, developer, in that particular case were set aside because the building belonged to the city. There are just some things like that that, that were troublesome, bothersome. Inconsistent. Inconsistent. Mm -hmm. And if our goal is to to encourage development, business, economic development, uh, then consistency and predictability need to be part of, of what we're doing, need to be a major part of what we're doing. Okay. Anything else on the issues list? And we'll skip past, past it after we address the Santa Fe corridor. Anything else? Going once, going twice. All right. Um, Steve, I kind of get the feeling you have some more issues that we may want to bring up or you might want to bring up on the Santa Fe on anything <laughs> I'm, I'm okay right now okay um, I just wanted to kind of repeat I'm really concerned that if we don't meet with City Council to kind of discuss some of these issues and kind of resolve some of these issues that we've had, we're going to be in the exact same situation we were with the downtown area plan. And I think all of us want to um, avoid that kind of situation. And that comes with communication with the city council. So, um, so would it be safe in saying that as a commission, given that we think we'd like to think we've all learned from the downtown plan approval process, to and fro and back and forth. We'd like to see this this um, rearrangement of priorities and roles process be a little more effective, a little more direct and and uh, uh, collaborational. Is collaborational a word? Collaborative rather than than uh, argumentative. You know, if if city council can explain what it is they think they want to try and do ask us for input about how effective we think this is going to be or do we see any conflicts with that give us a chance to respond in a rather informal situation rather than just trading official memos voted on by a, approved by a four to three or five to two vote i think that's really what we're looking for just chance to weigh in on it okay. You're speaking specifically about amending the comp plan i i think Actually, you know what? We ought to be we ought to be uh, broad-minded enough to suggest that City Council extend that to any other board and commission whose role is is going to be subjected to significant changes. I think all those boards and commissions would like to think that their experience and their their lessons learned are sufficiently valued that City Council would want to talk with them about it before they just unilaterally change the rules, even though they certainly have the power, the authority to do that. Geez, that brings me up to um, what City Council approved last Tuesday, and that's the protocol and standards of con conduct, which was approved on 11712. And I encourage you guys to go on the web and actually look at it. And 
Um, in this, it says council boards and empl city employee communications. Um, and they have the intention to improve open communication and the public policy decision making process, um, which means, quote, all council slash board members are expected to receive information that is relevant to the council's policy making authority and deliberations, as well as to the education and knowledge of individual members. So to me, that means that they're through this, what they just adopted, they would like to be inclusive of the boards and commissions. And so this really, this really kind of outlines a kind of standard of behavior when you're dealing with public or meetings or any kind of communication with any boards and commissions. So in my purpose of saying that is that, you know, if they're going to change everything on us, they do definitely need to give the commission some kind of notice based on what they've just adopted. Uh, Steve? Has the discussion uh, reached council about uh, adding a liaison to the planning commission? You know, they, they set up a, a separate committee to deal with those issues, and I don't know if they've even met yet. So rather than actually decide it, I think they have a uh, board of commissions, I, I think. Yeah, um, they did. They talked about it at their last meeting. Did they talk about it at the last meeting, mm -hmm. last council meeting? Mm -hmm. um, that I, I think it was on the consent agenda item down toward the bottom. It was around J or K or something like that. It's either one or two items before the downtown plan adoption or one or two after it. I think they probably set the committee up. Um, but that was about it. Yeah. Yeah, and they set the roles and responsibilities of the committee, so they have a document that's available. I don't know if it's online, but I've got an extra copy if somebody wants. But it, it definitely goes through the scope of the project. Well, presumably they're going to do something about resolving whatever whatever, whatever end result they, they expect from it before they have to go through the interviews, which is set, are set for the end of February. I believe you're right. Right. All right, so any other comments before we move forward to the Santa Fe corridor? Jenny? Oh, I'm just, uh, I am looking forward to, uh, to having a defined time frame. I think it'll be helpful for doing the, updating the comp plan. I think it'll be helpful for uh, council, staff, us, and I think it'll be good as we lay out the work plan to know how everything is fitting together. So. I'm looking forward to that, and I'm looking forward to a shorter time frame, more of the, I mean, six months does sound short, but the 12 months, um, when staff mentioning that, it seems more doable. And I guess that also um, helps to not have as much turnover. And I think that'll help everyone to stay more focused. It seems like when things go too far beyond a year, it seems like, things start to slow down as far as the momentum going and the train of thought and everyone keeping focused on that, um, that item. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that shorter time frame. Thank you. I think we all are. <laughs> I mean. What, nobody wants to go through four more years just for one more neighborhood? Really? Four more years. Four years. Let me four see. <laughs> <laughs> so are we talking about the South Santa Fe Quarter? Yes, can we move to the South Santa Fe Quarter? I, I, I'd like to say one thing. First of all, I, I think I was one of the ones who chimed in at the last meeting or the meeting before that and said, gee, can you get us a copy of the Santa Fe Quarter map because we didn't have it? I apologize. I happen to have two copies <laughs> of the comp plan and one copy had a copy of the South Santa Fe Quarter map inserted into it. So now, thanks to this action, I have one to go into each copy. Uh, the other question I had, though, is, Where does the, we got the South Platte River Corridor development design objectives uh, in with our original documentation when most of us got came on board four years ago? That that's really not a part of comp plan. It's more comparable to uh, design, design standards and guidelines for the South Santa Fe or South Platte River Corridor, comparable to the downtown design guidelines. Design guidelines. If if you haven't. You might look through your files and resurrect that. There's some interesting things in there as well. It's a folded up <laughs> item. It was you, we got a big box of of notebooks and and you know, items, publications so, like this. Yeah. So is that supposed to is 
the South Platte intended to be a subset of the Santa Fe Corridor? Actually, it, it overlaps. It's the same area, different name, but th this is design standards and guidelines as opposed to the, the comprehensive plan itself. Right. Yeah, they should dovetail. I'm sure they will. I mean, it's only 11 years old. So. All right. Let me ask city staff what they think the best um, the best approach to look at this map would be. Well, I think it wasn't just looking at the map. I, I think the direction that you um, want, the reason you want it on the agenda is to, if there was any inconsistency, whether the goals, policies, the map, whatever, let's get those out on the out on the uh, table. So as you put them out there, we will record them. Sorry. Can I ask one question up front, Dennis? As you go through this map on, on the individual areas that are, that are uh, hard-lined or outlined, uh, it'll say something like, um, well, what, the, the, ex the area, shall we call it the Walmart property? Okay. <laughs> Um, has five different areas identified by um, land use categories in lighter type. RS, PDX, B3, RE, R1, but then in the middle of it, there in darker letters, there's a designation of BP. I, am I right in leaping to the conclusion or the assumption that the lighter uh, titles are current zoning and the darker ones are the recommendation Correct. from the quarter plan? Okay, thank you. That's what I thought, but I wanted to make sure. Recommendation for use. Right. right. Can we go over the boundaries of the plan? Because I think this is a little confusing when we look at it. You know, just kind of where does it begin, where does it end? You know, what's included, what's not included? You want to put it up? On the that screen? would be great. Mm -hmm. Remembering that this predates our re redefinition of the football, and that, that's the one big discrepancy on here. The downtown football, I mean. Can you speak more in the microphone? Yeah. There's a street that goes down through here. Of course, it goes down to Erickson. This is Woolhurst Mobile Home Park. This is Mineral. This is the river. Sure. You bet. And again, oh, thank you. So is that Erickson area? Is that in the plan? Erickson is not in the plan. Erickson's south of it. This is part of the old Erickson. This is a flying bee. So that's the north part that's actually in Littleton. And that's the portion that is for sale currently. Uh, so just just south of of, of, uh, of County Line Road there. This dotted line is actually the boundary, right? Correct. <laughs> Which at the moment suggests that that includes downtown. That's right. Interesting. Right. Yeah. And it uh, there's also there's also that area um, up at uh, Mineral and Platte Canyon up there, 
where they have all the uh, apartments up there. Mm -hmm, which is over here. And uh -huh. uh, also over there where they have uh, the Polo Reserve and mm -hmm. what, Meadowbrook? Right, Polo Reserve is here. So All yeah. over outside of the planned area. Outside the planned area, because so it's just. They, so that area, that area of the city has no comp plan at all. That's even correct. even less than we have on the. Uh, it, it still has order. the citywide. What we've been able to use is the exactly. citywide goals and policies, of course, but it doesn't have a neighborhood plan specific to it, correct? Or, or a corridor plan. So that was you know, one of the things that we looked at is we have an area here that doesn't have, was not in the city when the plan was done. And we also have an area. Uh, northeast, that, you know, a couple areas northeast that were not in the plan. So there are different parts around the city that weren't in the plan in the, in the city when the plan was done. So, Dennis, can you um, this area station. down here? Mm -hmm. Is that this is um, again? This is County Line Road coming across here. Yep. Okay. So this part is is Woolhurst Mobile Home Park. This is the Erickson property, the old Flying B. And, and it goes down, there's a road that goes through here, goes south of C-470, and goes to what is currently the Erickson property. They own this, but they're selling that, or now bank owned, I think. Um, and then this is McClellan Reservoir here. Uh, this is, so is that mineral coming across here. That area down there that you were calling the former Erickson property, mm -hmm. I just see bold lines around that. So is that considered part of the the South Santa Fe corridor, or no, it stops at the railroad tracks? I, I think it's not. I think you. I think you're right. I think you, what you're seeing for the south uh, actually ends on the east side of, of uh, Santa Fe. So it, you see a dashed line here yeah. on the east side. So I think that's the boundary. Mm -hmm. I think they're just showing that it's in the city. So. Okay. Right now, it looks like the boundary for this corridor, as intended when it was drawn, is immediately east of the railroad tracks, all the way down. Yeah. From north of Bellevue to south of uh, uh, County Line Road, or to right at two uh, County Line Road. Right. And the, it, the anomalies are that that therefore incorporates the downtown area right. as well. Right. It's been super. It's now been superseded by the design standards and guidelines for downtown. So, right. which are more specific. It does, however, still have guidance uh, in in here for the area just outside of downtown. So, uh, the Echo Star properties. Um, as well as the properties to the north. And, and I think from the Echo Star property north of Bowles and west of Santa Fe, south, that's pretty much the way we've all been thinking of the, this corridor coming up. Okay. It's, it's the anomaly of downtown being swept into this and then all those other properties um, west of the river that are not in downtown going up north around Bellevue. Hmm. So I think those, those are the anomalies we ought to be thinking about. And when they do this, and you read through here, there's not a lot of direction for downtown. It's more right on the edges is what they were looking at. So, Well, and eventually that's going to get us, well, several places along down, uh, along, see, across Santa Fe from downtown, mm -hmm. across Bellevue from the downtown, and, and Santa Fe from the downtown area, and then across Santa Fe, East, um, you know, when you get down around county line, eventually we're going to have to start thinking not just about discrete small area plans, but overlaps, relationships, interactions. We started to get into that when we talked about the, uh, um, the, the property immediately west of, uh, of Main Street. Across Santa Fe, right. We talked about these, right? Areas. And and yeah. so it's not. It, it didn't go away. Yeah. I mean, I I know we we managed to uh, finesse it with the downtown plan and city council's concerns, but sooner or later we're going to have to talk about the fact that that there's no line going down the middle of a highway that's going to differentiate between concerns about development and impacts. Well, I think McDonald's was a perfect example in that. It, you know, officially it's downtown, but it's certainly uh, in terms of character is more Santa Fe than it is downtown. Right. Yeah, areas are going to bleed Steve? into each other. Right. Rena, did you? I'm just noticing that um, west of Santa Fe, where is it the River Point crossing? What's it called? That development we have. To the north. Mm -hmm. Where there's Starbucks, 24 Hour Fitness. So that was not part of the Santa Fe corridor. So that had no specific neighborhood guidelines. No, that would be that's Goddard. That goes that goes on the uh, Goddard plan. Uh, 
Is, if, if part of the neighborhood plan, and there also is a, centennial. a specific uh, zoning for that, you know, so that it actually did go through, I think, uh, there's a PD, um, right. I think, that actually gets very specific <laughs> yeah, for that whole area. So. Okay. <coughs> Are there any uh, recommendations as far as widening the corridors, shortening it? Uh, you know, I think to me, we almost need to do that inventory and look at property by property to see what's in the corridor and see what's outside the corridor. And that's why I also think it's important to have the plan so that we can, we'll know one day this is what we're doing. We're identifying the inconsistency so we can come back to the meeting to say, all right, here are, here's what we see are in, is inconsistent with this map and then also you know what what are the what's in this area in terms of the property and house development I would, Steve? I would recommend on adding the uh, the polo reserve that area into the plan because uh, they're they're going to fit more into the Santa Fe plan than they are anything else and if we're going to have any sort of uh, um, anything having to do with uh, park boundaries or you know um, anything protecting the park or allowing uh, uses right up to the park or anything on the plan, then that would uh, need to be portioned into it also. I guess you know, what, one of the things we need to think about it is um, kind of one of the outstanding issues um, for that area. Um, and I guess typically what we're going to look at is we've got detailed zoning for the residential in Polo Reserve. Um, and it's and it's built out at this point. So uh, the, the one site that's remaining is is the commercial site at Mineral and and, and uh, South and Platte Canyon, and a couple um, of other little parcels. I, I think maybe this Glen is a good example or a good opportunity for City Council and Planning Commission to decide what is it we're trying to do with small area or corridor plans. Are we trying to protect existing uses and users as well as reassure potential uses and users? as to what is going to happen in there, that area, uh, and therefore are we talking, are we concerned about what happens between South Santa Fe and the river, or are we concerned about not just what happens along South Santa Fe bleeding over to the river, but also going on to the other side of the river, and that's what I think well, Steve's and, trying to get at. Glenn and I can talk a little bit more about what, what is you know, typically thought of in these situations, and, and, and Craig can too, in terms of you know, kind of what we've seen. Uh, typically, you look at zoning for locking things in place, you know, you, uh, and we're fortunate in, in Littleton to have very few instances um, where we have zoning which is inconsistent either with the existing development or the desired development for those sites. Um, uh, that's unusual with a lot of cities. A lot of cities uh, have been terribly overzoned in the past. Uh, you know, during a bout of one thing or another when they thought major city were going to redevelop and they thought rezoning it to allow that and to encourage that uh, was kind of the, the answer for that. We really haven't gone through that in Littleton. So for the most part, our zoning is pretty consistent to what, what we have and, and what uh, the plan would say we'd want. Um, the other part of what of that equation you mentioned is is where do you, how do you address issues? And, and typically that's where the plan comes in, is you really try and focus on what are the outstanding issues um, and where are those? And, and if you can kind of identify sites that we really may have um, to, to look at and, and address issues for, and we don't have the proper direction on, you know, where are those? So try and identify those sites primarily. Okay, if this were to come up, we wouldn't know what to say because we don't have a plan that is either current or, uh, and even if it's not current, um, it may be correct, um, but one we think is incorrect at this point that's really out of date. So you want to feel comfort level that you've got the plan in place that gives you the direction. But again, it's really focusing on, yeah, is it on, what are the sites on Santa Fe that you think are in question? What are the sites on Broadway? What are the sites throughout the entire city? And going back to why you decided to do downtown, that was kind of the, the rationale for doing downtown was that was what you were seeing, that's what city council was seeing in terms of issues where people are having direction for, you know, what, where do we need direction? And so you do Pres downtown. Presumably if our zoning map as, as it exists and our zoning ordinance makes sense in terms of buffers, you know, setbacks from different uses, industrial versus residential, that sort of thing. Then, if the zoning just stayed the way it was and development followed the zoning planning, a plan, 
we'd be in pretty good shape. Every now and then you're going to have loss of industrial or loss of interest in industrial property that then has to be given a new appropriate use or use appropriate to the surrounding areas. What we found in the last five or six years is that's not necessarily the case. Too often what we've encountered is a developer coming in and wanting to to change the intended use of the property beyond what the zoning is, usually by going to a PDO, but sometimes with a, a, a straight PD, that's when the, the comprehensive plan with an overall vision needs to be in, in place. And the problem with something like the South Platte Corridor, or, or sorry, the South Santa Fe Corridor or the South Platte River Corridor is, what, where's your priority? Is the priority developing the, the retail not just possibilities. I mean, Santa Fe is given to retail. I mean, who are we kidding with the traffic up and down there? On the other hand, as you bleed over to the park, it becomes less desirable to have high density, high activity um, uses along the river. And then as you get over on the other side of the river, you start shifting from commercial development along Santa Fe to protecting the, the open space in the park along the river. We, we need to talk with the city council about where is this headed? How are we going to chop Steve? this up? Um, you just said that it's less desirable to have high density right next to the park. They just jammed in uh, that one right behind uh, Aspen Grove between the park and Aspen Grove, a high density right there. Yeah, and, and there was a, a basic change in philosophy between the, the uh, Platte River or uh, Platte Park plan that had been part of the original 1981 comp plan when it switched to the South Santa Fe corridor plan. Uh, the original plan said we don't want uh, daytime activity next to the park, so therefore no residential. It should be small-scale office and that sort of thing. The new plan doesn't necessarily say the same thing. Th that kind of flip-flop needs to be at least thought about. Maybe not necessarily by us, but starting with city council. But we ought to at least get everything out on the table so everybody understands where it's come from, what it looks like but now, and what the issues, what the conflicts are. I think we've got to do it instead of city council. We've got to identify those priorities and then review it with city council. But what I've heard tonight is that we need to do an inventory of properties. We need to identify priorities. We need to identify sites that may change. Um, and this is another reason why I think we need that tightly that really that tight plan is so that we don't get unfocused from what are, what is it that we really need to accomplish for that day for that evening because right now I don't know what we're going to accomplish with looking at this map I don't either I, we had just asked that we would all have it so we could all look at it and now that we've ha gotten it and looked at it we've identified several areas of concern issues details or otherwise I'd like to think that this can be shared with City Council before they start considering redirection or, or a redefinition of uh, roles and responsibilities so they have some aware uh, some awareness of how the trees grow not just how to manage the but forest. I think they're just going to gloss over this and just say okay so what is this uh, you know what is this BP what is this PDI what is this MU all, what is, all you we know? can I do mean, is recommend it to I their think, attention we can't we can't control what they're going to do with it we can't control how they're going to come back and redefine our our mission or our responsibilities to me it's more valuable to stick at the stay at the high level rather than going down to this level of detail why we're concerned about the santa fe area and i think that would be good enough you know jenny uh, one of the things i was thinking of for an overall goal and i'm more of one that drives uh, through and sometimes stops at some of the, the different businesses. But for me, um, elevating the experience of the Santa Fe Quarter such that people know that within the city that you're within the city limits and that clearly setting Littleton's historic identity apart from other neighboring cities. What I find is that when I drive through busy streets, that uh, it's nice to know that there is a distinction that when you go, f when you transition from Englewood, that I'm in the city of Littleton, even before you hit the fact that, okay, the downtown turns, it's Main Street, um, and then knowing that you've, you've exit, you have exited into Highlands Ranch. And so, or if people coming from Highlands Ranch going the other way, um, they know where they're in the city of Littleton. And so for me, that to me is one of the big important goals is uh, 
that distinction, whether, and it's the, the theme for the streetscape, uh, the overall experience, even how the buildings relate to the street, um, and from sidewalks to landscaping to lighting, signage, artwork, uh, more pedestrian friendly, residential and commercial, just those kind of characteristics that there's, there's that, um, that sense of knowing I'm in the city of Littleton and not in another neighboring city. So it's, it's just helpful. I, I enjoy when even um, on Broadway, going into Englewood, that there's artwork, that there's a distinction. Okay, I'm in Englewood. I know it. <laughs> so, um, and that it's not just driving through and sections of the city. So, okay. Yeah, I, I like that, Jenny. Um, I have, there's three particular things that I'm interested in on the Santa Fe corridor, and, and one is, um, Sort of related to that, I think, is you know identifying and sort of focusing on those uh, two or three areas of change, um, which are um, at the intersections of, of uh, Mineral, around the light rail station, uh, around the um, uh, west side of uh, at Bowles. Um, that whole area is going to change over time, and then up near Bellevue, which we haven't really. Uh, talk too much about even though it's proximate to the downtown area and you know the, the idea that you know that there is some identity associated with Littleton along Santa Fe and we talked about the idea of gateways you know perhaps there's a series of gateways that welcome you into Littleton through there um, but yeah, that's one area that, that I think we could focus on. Uh, another one that I'm, I'm particularly interested in, and there's been, I, I know, a, a group, a committee, uh, with council working on uh, open space issues along um, uh, the South Platte River and um, its proximity to commercial uh, development. I know it was a big issue with the Walmart proposal um, that, you know, the appropriate buffers, the appropriate uh, uh, open space be preserved along that edge and, and especially um, appropriate connections back into the rest of Littleton. And uh, associated with the downtown plan, we talked about Littles Creek making that a more robust connection into the South Platte River. Um, I think there's yet uh, Lee Gulch is another good one. Um, there's the one Slaughter, Slaughterhouse Gulch um, never really connects through. But you know, what are the opportunities to take these uh, natural systems that we have that have trails along them and make them better connections, both ecologically and trail-wise and open space-wise into the South Platte River. And then it starts to say something as you cross those along Santa Fe. Um, so it's sort of that green infrastructure. And the, the third thing is because it happened before my time on the Planning Commission, um, and perhaps others would be interested as well, is you know, what were some of the lessons learned from the whole Walmart thing about how uh, development is approached? What, what what is the market opportunities for commercial along here and what do we need to be concerned about in terms of um, uh, whether it's right or not for the community? You know, I'm going to say at this point, it, it sounds to me like we're, we're kind of edging into the kind of shifted roles that, Glenn, you were alluding to earlier as far as staff doing most of the professional detailed legwork. Uh, looking to planning commission for advice and consideration. I mean, what we're talking about now are the issues that come to our minds as we look at, at these particular areas uh, or when we start talking about citywide issues. And it isn't necessarily for us, for us to thrash out all of the details and the commas and, and the, uh, the bullet points, but well, it, it, is, it is our job to raise the issues, to decide what needs professional evaluation versus versus public input. Um, and I think we're starting to do some of that tonight. Yeah, That's not think, necessarily bad. I think we almost have a template based on all the discussions. And, um, we'll write and you it know, up. a little bit premature, but uh, we've got definitely a template. And if not, we've got tons of agenda items to address based on the meeting. So. I think that's good input. Um, are we ready to move to the next subject? Anything else on Santa Fe? Or some people like to say Santafe, Santa Fe. <laughs> All right, so our next um, agenda item is 
to look at Matt's project plan. So can I just turn it over to Matt? Yeah. Do you want me to Based on what Glenn said earlier, I'm not sure it's really necessary to go through it because uh, what Glenn was saying really gets behind what I was saying, quite frankly, which is that um, I felt like in order to uh, move through the comp plan project efficiently and provide a professional result, um, that we were kind of going the wrong direction. And what I meant by that is we should be have a structured project plan with city project managers in charge that we should be able to operate with more than one um, path. Um, and beyond that, that the, the majority of the work um, really should be done by city staff um, with the comp plan serving as more of the 10,000 foot approval level not focusing on every sentence, on every word, on every period, on, you know what I mean? Focusing on the fact that the, we're here to represent people who live in the city and make sure that the right message is included in that comp plan. Um, what I attempted to do with the project plan at a very high level, as you can tell, is just to kind of lay that out and say, you know, there's different responsibilities in here and and if I were to, to lay this out and say, okay, staff versus the commissioners, um, in terms of a time commitment, you'd see more like a 95-5 with staff, 95% of the time with professional staff working on it. Um, the other thing that you'd see um, talking about um, the, the different steps that are on our parking lot or our issues list or whatever is that I would have suggested an approach where we allow city staff to go out and designate project plan um, managers, prepare a project plan, prepare a template for lack of a better um, term, suggest definition of, of uh, how we break down the chapters of the comp plan. Let all that happen while the members of the commission focus on other business. And so the other business would be, I, I had on here the TIS and, and the PDO process just as ideas to start. But that, that's what I mean by multiple threads, you know what I mean? While these get, while the staff is, is preparing the agenda for the comp plan, drafting a comp plan template, setting up a, a process whereby we're going to get feedback from uh, the community, things like that. We can work on other tasks and allow that work to continue. And honestly, the, the city staff can come to us with a, uh, you know, a 75% or 95% version of the comp plan for us to approve. And that's really what I was suggesting with this. I don't think we need to go through it step by step, but that's really what I was after. And it really followed exactly what you said. But the approach is sound. I mean, having the project plan and laying out responsibilities and timeline. Once we get clear with, with the city council and staff how we're going to structure this thing, whether we're going to talk about a community-wide base and then focus on specific areas rather than try and make the entire city into one piece fits into another piece fits into another piece, we may find that taking the community-wide approach and then focusing within that community-wide approach on specific areas like the South uh, Santa Fe corridor and the Broadway corridor and that sort of thing may fit better. So let's wait until we see what city council comes back with, what staff can suggest, and then we can pick up the idea of this, uh, this approach for a project plan and apply it to the uh, newly defined targets. Yeah, we're saying the same thing. And, and the other thing I'd say about timeline is I agree with what everybody else has said here. You know, we should set a challenging goal to complete this, um, and um, we should challenge both sides of it. We should challenge the city staff to produce a high quality product in a reasonable amount of time, and and on the back end of that, we're gonna have to make a commitment to completing that. I feel like nine months to a year is probably appropriate. Um, I feel like the key there is that with, a, with project management and with assigned staff, 
that this is their job, they have goals, they have to be managed to the goals, then, you know, nine months from now we should be reviewing the, the comprehensive plan for approval and completion. And, you know, nine months to a year seems appropriate to me with, with uh, somebody from staff committing, you know, 75 or, you know, percent of their time, whatever it takes, which isn't for me to decide, but you see the direction I'm going. Any Thank you. comments, Jenny? Um, well, I appreciate Matt uh, going through this and putting this together, and I am looking forward to, and something like this is actually what I was uh, wanting to see coming forward um, as we progress. So um, I think this is a, a great start to start to think about how do we lay out some of the tasks and look at the comprehensive plan and I think it'll be great to see from staff how um, having something that is concrete that we can all work with and we're all on the same page and moving forward I think is uh, I think will really help us stay focused. Mm -hmm. I've used really a, a very similar format. The only thing I've done is I've collapsed it in a quarter just to give me more wiggle room, but uh, it looks very similar to what you have here. Yeah, and, I, and I'm definitely not stuck on format. I, this was more just a real high level thrown out there just to demonstrate the concept that, you know, we need separation of duties and that honestly, you know, um, us citizens, right, we pay Littleton professional planning staff to do this kind of work and that most of the work should be done by the, the planning staff. We should be at an approval level and the planning staff should have a project plan to operate with. And so. Okay. Um, it just got me thinking as we were talking about this, it's not related to this format, which I think is a great start, um, but with the comp plan process, um, and it's something to throw into the mix. And th one thing I think we were missing with downtown area was the sort of background research that informs the plan, um, such as demographics, demographic trends, traffic. It's obviously traffic and land use are very uh, related. Um, the trends, the, you know, so that a lot of the mass uh, comp planning decisions uh, and, and public discussion um, can be informed. Um, oh. by objective uh, analysis. So. I absolutely would agree. And, and what I have in my mind is a series of white papers that would go to the Planning Commission and say, okay, we see these issues as perhaps as what these numbers are showing us. What are you seeing? And, and utilizing the, the Commission on that idea, you know, to, after you look at the data, what's it telling us? What are we hearing on the street? That sort of thing. So. Um, yeah, I, I, that's definitely going to be a part of it. It's got to be the whole inventory of the community and what's changed since 1981. And the only other thing I, I, I would add that I think is a, an important part of it, although I still think there's separation um, from, the, from the Planning Commission's perspective, is that the Planning Commission, where possible, participate in that feedback process as an observer. You know, the Planning Commission doesn't need to be taking notes or, or uh, you know, writing flow charts with, the, you know what I mean? Observing, listening, and, and what I mean by separation of duties is you don't need nine people there, right? We can have two Planning Commissioners represent an area, um, and that way we can, you know, um, handle multiple areas at the same time when we get into public feedback. Um, I, I think it's... Personally, I think it's a kind of a waste of time to have the whole planning commission sitting through feedback sessions when we could divide into smaller groups. But okay, any other comments on the process? Linda, I have a comment. Oh, sorry. Um, one of the other, I I appreciate this a lot. Um, just one of the ways I separated this was um, the area up on top, and and this is again comes back to if we. Uh, truly do adopt a, a program approach, a project plan approach, um, you know, th what I see as the maybe one, two, three, four, five, maybe the five on top is 
uh, is to try to articulate what we are trying to accomplish, the so tasks associated to get to the what, and then down below is then tasks associated to the how. So I think it's important to understand the distinction there because the uh, what this is also suggesting is the how below has a dependency on the what above, right? Okay, and then the other um, important um, thing that I would um, ask that we add to this is milestones. So we've listed tasks to achieve what milestone to align to what goal coming back to City Council. So it just kind of closes the loop for us that we know what tasks we're doing to achieve what milestone to meet what goal um, so that we don't go down rabbit holes that are unnecessary. Makes perfect sense. So... Go ahead, Dave. I think, again, I'm going to say this again. Once staff and city council, with whatever input they're willing to uh, consider from us, comes back with a better description of the uh, program, the approach to it, whether we're going to chop it up into the, we're going to keep the neighborhoods as they are, we're going to chop them up into different neighborhoods, we're going to do the process I suggested as a, as a possibility overall, community wide, and then hot spots, whatever. Then you can start talking about what kind of schedule. But before you finalize that, you're also going to have to decide how you're going to organize the public feedback. There's, there's a problem. Well, you try, let, let, me, let me define what the problem is here. If you try and do a community-wide feedback, you're, the, the information you get, the insight you're going to get because of the lack of, all, of understanding of the detail from the community as a whole is going to be a more, more amorphous. It isn't going to be focused. It isn't going to be based on a lot of understanding. It's, it's going to be somebody living over here saying one thing, somebody living over here saying something else. If, on the other hand, we chop it up into even smaller neighborhoods, that process may produce better information, but it's going to take a lot longer. So we're going to have to look at the program, what, what city council expects us to get out of it, how we're going to approach it, and then set the timeline and the project plan accordingly. But I think part of the project plan is to include that definition, because if we don't define that up front, I mean, that's, all, that's also dependent on a number of different activities. Okay, so. And I, I would just add, uh, I agree with what both of you are saying, and conceptually, uh, Car what Karina said is right on with that. Like, to me, um, you, you can um, do this in steps, just the way, like, I've managed a bunch of projects over the years, and you, you do it in steps, but you set... Um, goals and milestones and and the first milestones being we're going to get through that process of um, defining you know what direction we're going to go with with uh, neighborhood uh, definition if we're going to go that route or community-wide I kind of like community-wide personally um, um, what we're going to do in terms of defining our feedback process to me that's sort of the front end and then certainly you can say, okay, we've met that milestone. Now we define, you know, what our next milestone is. You know what I mean? I'm certainly, you could, you talked about quarters. You know, what are we going to accomplish in the next three months? I would suggest that all of those things that I just talked about could be accomplished in the next three months. And then another three months we, we have our, our draft of the community-wide, you know, in another three months we wrap it up. So... Marina. That actually reminded me of a process we just went through. So um, it, it's really a combination of top-down and bottom-up. And so that um, there, there does need to be some direction from the top-down on goals, vision, et cetera. And, and I think we'll have to figure out how to really get to that. And, and maybe it comes from city council. And then there's the bottom-up that is coming from the community. But it's the, it's the exercise that then I think that's where the commission comes is, is very crucial is that when we when it's brought together, we we have the top down, we have the bottom up. That's where the the, the most work really comes into play. And um, I have some um, um, white papers or, or or some kind of description around you know how top down and bottom up can work. Some of the risks associated with it, or the the you know the pluses and minuses to it. So it's not to suggest that this is necessarily the best way. But what it does suggest is here's what you give up with this approach and here's what you gain. And then, you know, we can decide if, if that's uh, the approach we want to take um, within this exercise. So I'll try to dig that up and share that. Sounds good. Yeah, Jenny? 
Um, also with the, uh, the public process, I guess one of the things um, would be great is that not just looking at the various neighborhoods, but also trying to encourage uh, a, f a good representation of the various demographics, um, from families with children to our, our oldest residents, you know, to really get more of that combination. Because I've gone to meetings working on the, na or as a resident, I attended one of the downtown uh, neighborhood public sessions, and um, there wasn't a very good representation of the spectrum of, uh, of ages within our community to provide input. I think um, when the mailer that went out for the downtown neighborhood plan, I think got a little bit more of that spectrum because families with children are more busy. They're not as apt to come out for an evening session, and especially those who are uh, much older, too. It's more difficult to come out on an evening session during the week. So. I think you get a little bit more of that demographic spectrum, but I am kind of interested with the web-based. I think you're going to get maybe some of the younger group uh, providing input in that format. So I think it's actually nice to have some multiple formats, not just um, neighborhood demographic meetings, but just the, the type of medium that is used to reach uh, the residents in our community. I think we're going to I think it will be helpful to use, because people do appreciate to have more of that face-to-face, -face, being able to talk about what their comments are versus the, the web-based. Um, so really maximizing our, our formats, I think, will help pull that information out. Any other comments? Uh, and I Matt? would just say, sort of in wrapping it up, I think our expectation, and, and Glenn, you've already defined this, coming in, our expectation is you and your team are putting that plan together and bringing the plan to us. And so, um, I mean, that the staff is in charge of the plan, um, I'm not sure that we'd necessarily ratify it, but that, you know, we, you guys put together a plan, bring it to us, we, we say, okay, let's charge up the hill together according to the plan, and that's how we want to go. So. Glenn, do you think councils willing to allocate enough staff to do that <laughs> and and is your do you have enough staff to do all that um, yes I think we do um, and I would really like to keep it in-house and uh, utilize our staff and, and that's one reason why the citywide goals is a is a good test for us and I think uh, we can deal with that with some help in the outreach um, and that's one reason why again we go to council because we're going to be asking for some money there um, when you get in the Santa Fe corridor, I think there's also traffic issues, and I, I think you know it'd be nice to have a traffic engineer or, or some more somebody with a little bit more specialty than perhaps we have on staff. So that's also another reason why I'd like to take the overarching um, step first. But um, to answer your question quickly, I would say yes, we were going to do it in-house, and uh, we've already talked with uh, public information; they're devoting staff to it as well. So it's it's not just Dennis and I. Um, though that's really going to be the lion's share, um, but it'll be folks in the house. We always say you can have it quick or you can have it cheap, but you can't have it both. <laughs> <laughs> Tell the council that. I like that. <laughs> um, are we ready to move on to the HP board? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. I s went to my first HPB meeting, and it was interesting. It only took about 30 minutes. <laughs> but, um, and I wouldn't say I have anything groundbreaking. Um, it was brief, and uh, I think the main thing that I thought was uh, really cool is that uh, they have some money that they'll award during the year to different uh, um, owners downtown to work on things like graffiti removal or or uh, changing your your facade on your building or or modernizing things so um, and that there's an application process and the HPB approves it so I thought that was kind of cool although it's a pretty limited budget but it's it's pretty cool so um, that was my first meeting and that's my report okay um, commissioners do we start with Jenny see if you have anything any reports not this time. Okay. Dave? Kurt? No. Okay. 
Yeah, I just wanted to point out, I was just reading, and maybe some of the other commissioners have too, about the story about up in the Highlands right now where they're having issues with the five-story building proposals. Kind of this is the height issue that we've been talking about is, is a front burner issue there and has actually caused some, I, I guess, violent outbursts. <laughs> so it should be interesting to just kind of pay attention to that and follow, um, you know, it's a similar issue, similar scale of the neighborhoods, I think, especially, you know, when you look at our, our downtown and, and what they have is historic historic older neighborhoods, smaller scale, um, mixed residential and commercial, and um, should be interesting to Where'd see. Where did you read that? Where did you read, where did you read that? Was um, it in the paper? I, in the post. Was, was it in the post uh, this Sunday, 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 Denver Post? Weekend, yeah. <clears throat> and, yeah. and started five or six weeks ago. They had the same kind of discussion, focused more on the uh, problems that the recent uh, flurry of new restaurants and shops had uh, the problems that it created for uh, long-term residents trying to find parking. So a little different from our situation. We at least have Main Street, which is our focus for keeping the heights down. We've got the availability of space beyond that for, for higher buildings, and uh, we just have to work out a parking plan that's going to be consistent with that. Steve? Nothing. Matt, anything else? No. Karina? Nothing for me. So that takes us to the agenda for the next meeting on February 13th, which is after the City Council workshop. Thank you. Um, what about an agenda item to review the uh, workshop? Oh, Craig? I, I think, Glenn, you mentioned the 20th, so, but it sounds like we're on the, the 20th. Is 20... the 4th and the 20th or the 6th and 20th the two meetings? Isn't the 20th President's Day? I believe the 20th is President's Day. Second. Yeah, 13th is the second. Yeah, it would be the second. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Would we have enough time, I guess, would staff have enough time to review the outcomes from council and then have, have it available for discussion less than a week? It's like basically one day, eight hours <laughs> on <that> Monday. <laughs> Yeah, and again, we were going to give a basic plan to council to kind of get their nod, um, but I think we would like to flesh it out a bit more before we show it to council or to the planning commission. So I would say no. We could not have a meeting. Yes, do we, we get the week, week off? <laughs> I suggest if we don't have any public hearings that we table a meeting. And that is the city council meeting on the 10th is a public meeting. So, I mean, a lot of what their discussions are is open for anybody to hear. So what you're presenting is would be kind of known, <laughs> for lack of a better word. It, I think we're, I think we're at the uh, museum, so we're mm -hmm. televised. Right. But you certainly can attend. Yeah. The revolution will not be televised. <laughs> Sorry, I'm dating myself. <laughs> um, so what's, what do you, do we have a sense that people? Is there any reason we, other than the imposition on staff time for preparation, is there any reason we couldn't at least spend some time talking about some of the items on the issues list that wouldn't necessarily be in conflict with outcomes of the uh, city council workshop. Uh, at least start looking at something like the uh, TIS or PDO, or do you think that's going to be something that I think I the way council direction? I personally would like to see more of a structured approach and how we're looking at those issues, and that goes back to the plan because if we don't, if we just say let's look at it, what are we going to look at? At what, what are our expectations for that, for the results of that meeting, you know? Well, I mean, otherwise it's a free-for-all. Oh, well, yeah, we discussed this. Well, we need to pick a starting point and do that. I'm not, I'm not talking about the process now. I'm saying can we at least start? Can we decide how we're going to start and then start rather than losing the week? That's all I'm asking. Well, one of the other items on here, uh, actually, let me, let me try to answer David's question, or at least my opinion on that. Um, that 
to me with, without if, if things are on the issues list, so it, it's it's even two steps removed from uh, an indication of what the top four is. So if if we feel we're still a long ways out on just the top four, as Glenn's presented here, that's going to be council's. Um, you know, hot topics, and then the issues list is something that's, you know, I'm going to use the word parking lot, it's bottom of the list. See, see, that's been my concern about prioritizing in the first place. If we're saying, gee, we can't talk with the first four, so we're not going to take advantage of the time we have to talk about anything else, I'm, you've lost me there someplace. So, so let, me, let me come back. For us to spend time on that when it is highly likely that it will not rise to the top, where we've already have an indication of the things that are rising to the top, so let's use parking as one of them that we have talked about, um, even before it's been presented here as one of the topics. So if we don't want to, at this point, focus on the Santa Fe corridor because there's still discussions around the comp plan, why don't we at least look at some of the other hot topics being the parking? My answer to that would be because sooner or later we're going to have to deal with those issues in Can an application. It would be nice to have talked about it and taken a direction on it beforehand instead of reacting after the fact. Can I bring some potential agenda items that might be a little bit more fun? Uh, um, like Jenny, fun. Jenny recommended um, we could take as a homework item three ideas on parking that you would think would be good for the downtown area. Bring that back. We can consolidate it, give it to staff, and then um, no holes barred. You can think outside the box, and then therefore you've got a whole list of ideas that you can move forward with, a, with parking. And another idea that Jenny suggested, sorry, Jenny, um, <laughs> is that um, Dennis and Glenn, you bring your favorite books on planning and um, you know, maybe provide uh, different fun. tips and tricks. That sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> A book report? No doubt. How long has it been since you've done a book report? <laughs> like your, your, your tips and some of your experience in urban planning, that lessons that you've learned as you've kind of moved through your career. Uh, so, I mean, these are, you know, to keep it a little bit more lighthearted and then with potentially move forward. Sorry, I'd Kirk. rather stay home. <laughs> <laughs> you can send those parking ideas through email. <laughs> <laughs> was, um, you said Dr. Dr. Cog was a big issue with the timeline associated with that. Yeah. Is that something we should, is that another one we, maybe we can address that? Perhaps uh, Dennis can present kind of the Dr. Cog uh, urban center process. Sure. Okay. Sounds like there's urgency around that, so that might. And we can find out more of the requirements. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. So we have one thing on the agenda. Do we want to do the parking thing? Jenny? I, I don't think it would take too long. I mean, if we come with, uh, and I'm thinking come with ideas, some that are, you know, like the top three of some, like two that are conservative and one that's maybe a little more um, stretching that innovation of let's maybe think of something different um, that we haven't been doing in the city of Littleton. And... So just to, to just kind of break the ice on the parking and really bring out a lot of ideas, not just from, you know, one or two people, but really engage um, the planning commission. So, so you're thinking, uh, let, let me just drill down a little bit. So uh, the planning commission, just brainstorm. Just brainstorm and uh, bring those ideas to the parking table. Parking ideas. Parking ideas. We can do a prioritization or... Uh, just throw out the ideas. I think just throw yeah, out the just ideas. throw them out, no priorities, throw no nothing. Ideas. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it may not be as much fun, but could we do something practical like deciding what questions we ought to be asking if we're going to start talking about collecting information about where the parking is, how much it is, how much we need? Couldn't we start at least identifying the questions we think need to be asked so we have basic information to work with rather than start picking solutions before we've defined the problem? Or am I just being overly practical? Well, hold on. Let's get an agreement on that we want to bring our top three parking ideas. Do we? Uh, okay. uh, ideas to solve the parking, parking issues, issues downtown? Mm -hmm. is downtown, uh, this is going to the implementation from the downtown neighborhood plan. Is that the, the focus of it? Is that correct? The yeah, parking management plan. The parking management plan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So for downtown. So does everybody agree that we can do that? Sure. Okay. Now to Dave's idea of 
identifying the questions to be asked. Asked regarding, I, I missed, sorry, Dave. To solve what, the what parking, parking you know, what, what needs do the parking options have to address? What conflicts are there that, that we have to resolve or settle between the, the options? You know, what, what, are the, what, what are we going to ask staff to come back and present to us or consider themselves in terms of basic information about number of spaces available in certain places at certain times, number of spaces and, and location of spaces needed for certain purposes? Again, I know it sounds like a broken record, but at the beginning, your job has to be defining the problem, not shotgunning solutions. If you haven't defined the problem first, you're wasting time tasting solutions. Well, what about this bringing our top three conflicts to settle and just do a brainstorming that way and then we can give that to the staff and then they can look at not only the top three parking ideas and but the conflicts that we perceive needs to be settled. What do you guys think? Parking conflicts? Parking conflicts. Do, do, do we already know those? I'm, that's truly a question. Do we know what the parking issues are? Have they been documented somewhere? Um, yeah. Not really. Well, no, here's our opportunity. We haven't really decided well, yeah. what those issues are. And they, there are some people that say there's a parking problem yeah. and some that say there's not a parking problem. There's generally a parking problem on a few hours on a Friday night. Other than that, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's it's yeah. the old it's the old story of the blind the group of blind men feeling the elephant and trying to describe it. Everybody has a different take on it because they're approaching it from different directions. Okay, so do you guys, Karina? <laughs> it's just you know I I um I I think we just need to, to give ourselves more guidance of what we're, we're we're trying to bring solutions to as they've said to what problem or to what so it's either i we have to be clear of the issues that have been identified or the opportunities that are there and then we can brainstorm ideas so if if we have not clearly or we have different opinions of what the issues are then maybe the really the exercise is about trying to capture and document those issues or capture and document opportunities. And then we can get to the brainstorming of solving for. And we can certainly talk about the existing characteristics of downtown parking, which may help flesh out those conflicts. You know, we've got two-hour parking on the street. We have limited uh, off-street parking. We can, we can use those as examples to, to, to help us decide what questions we need to ask and how do we reconcile these apparent conflicts. <laughs> We're just talking about ideas and just giving city staff some ideas rather than talk about, like, what are all the documented issues. I mean, I'm sure that we could probably dig up some discussion that we've had in the past regarding the parking issues. But, you know, I don't want to kind of cloud the brainstorming with going back and kind of doing more of an academic exercise. I mean, the, the idea is to get, you know, whatever ideas that you can out there. I think, uh, I mean, I've attended the Hoodlum meetings, the um, historic downtown Littleton meeting, and the perception from that group is there's a parking issue. So whether there is or there isn't, it's definitely believed there's a parking issue. So it might be, I think it, it would be worth just to get the creative juices going, and, and it would be kind of a set and interesting benchmark to come back to. Well, we saw these as five solutions, and look three of them still are in the running or is hoodlum have any solutions no they've they never would. come up with one solution so. other than city needs to provide them parking that would probably be it so we have we can have public parking we can private parking or a public private parking who's going to pay for it is the number one issue i think well, well, then here's a creative solution to the two different approaches to this. Let's, let's wait, take wait, the wait, ideas. Wait, wait, wait. We're trying to set the agenda. We can talk about parking but let's at take, the next let's meeting. Let's take the ideas we brainstorm. We're running late. Okay, fine. Let's take the ideas that we brainstorm. And we're not just throwing them at staff. 
the ideas come up, and we're going to sit there and chew on them and decide, okay, what's the problem? What are the pros and cons of that particular problem? How does that conflict with or help a particular problem we see? Use those as, as examples. Don't just throw them on a list. Let's put some thinking into this thing and start looking at how they interact if, rather than throw it all on staff's back. Well, I wasn't thinking you were throwing on staff's back. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we've got Dr. Cog and then the top three parking ideas. Um, what about um, like a staff report on planning on maybe their favorite books or, uh, you know, just something a little more lighthearted? Well, You're like, I've, no way. Jenny, sorry. Yes, I was thinking if, if uh, the content is parking, if there, if you had some good books on planning for parking that that potentially you have around in your office that you think would be really interesting to bring forward or some images that you think are some pretty interesting solutions. Not that it would take that much time, but if you just happen to look around your office and say, you know what, that is a really good book, I think I might bring that, you know, but just potentially that could be something neat. I, what some cities are doing, I, I think, uh, I've been kind of blown away from is, uh, for instance, Milwaukee, they just decided, you know what, we're not going to require parking. It's totally a free market decision. And um, it has not blown up that community. And, and it seems to work, and it's a very walkable place. Okay. We can bring that to the next meeting, a, those things. A occurred. previous planning, one of the planning yeah. magazines that we get, I don't know if anybody read that a, a couple of there you go. magazines ago, there was an article about yeah, a couple um, of issues back. Um, charging for parking and how they, the rates varied by the time of day and where they were. So that was an interesting article. If you've got that magazine, look that up and, and read that. Yeah, I think that was the fall issue instead of the winter. Yeah, I, I got it and I highlighted it. I'll make sure I bring it or go back and look at where it was and email you with the identification. Just uh, one other agenda item, and I don't think we can fit it in next time, but for maybe the issues list. Um, Tom Christopite has been collecting a lot of uh, good information, first of all, for p a planning university, which I'm sure you could share with us, um, but also from his monthly or biweekly pub meetings um, where the last um, subject, I believe, was talking about um, ideas for the city. What do, what do we want the city to be? What, what should the council's priorities be? What should the city's priorities be? And I think he would be glad to come and spend a half hour or so um, sharing those ideas with us at some point. Um, that would be a great it. idea. Maybe in our workshop. The spring oh, workshop. yeah, that's a good idea. And the, just one more thing real quick. If, on the issues, if we instead of just issues list, can we call it issues for future review, perhaps? Sure. The way it, 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 if someone's looking at it, they understand what it is. So that's a perfect segue into, let me really quickly um, mention future agenda items, and this is what I got from the last meeting. Um, we wanted to compare the downtown area plan to the comp plan. We wanted to look at percentage of the study sessions or percentage of time that we spend in the study sessions and how we use it. Um, we wanted to address the planning commission workshop and then how the council is involved in the process. And some of the ongoing agenda items is a status, like a, maybe a quarterly update of the uh, downtown implementation plan. And we also talked about city council updates from Michael Penny, not from the last meeting, but from previous meetings and maybe doing that quarterly and then I've got the parking lot and then the processes potential ongoing agenda items so I just wanted to keep that in front of us as we go forward so any other comments before we get a motion to, motion adjourn? to adjourn second okay all those in favor Aye. All, right. all right we're adjourned <laughs> so did we end up saying Tom